I recorded this little toy, this little multifunctional meter in another video. So right now the engine is, or maybe that area, is at 75 Celsius degree. But if I use my uh, infrared thermometer and if I aim it at the kind of area, this one if I go farther because of the wider beam width uh, is going to do some averaging but let me get some uh, reading closer to the spark plug so 71 72 let's see if I can use the laser So uh, around the the spark plug, which I assume it does not lose much of the heat from the cylinder head up to my sensor. Yeah, so I'm getting 71, but earlier I got about maybe 10 Celsius degree difference between what this sensor was uh, picking up and my uh, infrared thermometer. So I know when the engine is running, I'm getting a higher temperature here uh, than what's indicated by this multimeter or a uh, temperature or thermometer I would say so for that reason I've used some of the some kind of a silicon higher temperature silicon and I'm not saying this is a solution I'm experimenting so the purpose of the silicon is to maintain um, an area of like a, to isolate that sensor from the environment because what happens the sensor is connected to a ring that goes around the uh, the spark plug so even I use the thermal compound I use a white silicon thermal compound grease uh, around that ring to make a better thermal transfer between the uh, spark plug and and that ring that is therm thermally connected to the sensor which is built in this cable uh, I'm still getting some error and I assume that because the ambient temperature let's say around this area I'm getting uh, some cold air especially when the paramotor rotor or the uh, propeller is pushing some air into the radiator is going to cause some airflow around this area so this area is getting some uh, cooler air than what's at the cylinder head temperature so in order to prevent the sensor the temperature probe get cooled down by the propeller or the any type of air uh, cold air um, I I put some uh, of that type of um, silicon so it's not proper insulation I thought to use some uh, kind of a foam high temperature foam I might look for such a thing uh, if I can get uh, flexible uh, high temperature foam I could mix some and add here but at the same time I want that ring to stay in place so when I want to replace or uh, take the spark plug out I don't want to deal with a temperature sensor all the times because uh, you have to kind of deal with maybe tie wraps or you know it's not really uh, one extra step or one extra thing you want to look after especially when you are out in the field flying or you want to do something with a spark plug so I don't know. I'll uh, play with this thing. I'll uh, leave it in place for some time, and uh, I'll see how it goes. And 
I read if done the uh, fuel flow or fuel shutoff valve. So this is the uh, fuel intake line and it comes to a, a valve that I can turn on and off. So right now it's on and it goes to my primer and it goes to the fuel tank, to the pickup line in there. So what I omitted here is the fuel filter, inline fuel filter, which I'm going to insert right here. Uh, once I get a new one, I kept looking in the local store. I could not get a, a small size, good quality fuel filter. All those things are for uh, lawn mowers and all, like it's paper made uh, fuel filter. I don't want to use those. And um, I'm using 94 octane gas and uh, synthetic oil on this machine. And I want to put a uh, good quality fuel filter in line as well. And I might have to replace this bulb. Uh, I bought a bigger one, a brand new, but um, it's kind of a bulk here. So I, I got back to my uh, old primer. But I had to use some of the silicone here because I assume I'm getting some air. This system is sucking some air. And even here, if I look, if I, if I look at this, this hose, uh, I have an air pocket. Where the air pocket came from, I have no idea because I, I replaced all the lines, including the one inside. So, uh, properly tied, clean. Uh, I could use tie wraps, like here. I've used shrink tube to keep it tight. I use tie wraps, but for some reason I'm getting air. I don't know. Maybe the uh, the fuel and the vacuum. Uh, <laughs> Uh, breaks apart I don't know uh, so I have a vacuum um, tester uh, or a vacuum gauge at home I might use it in line later but for now um, I'm just uh, testing experimenting so between the turning off uh, of the shuttle valve and the engine uh, starving of from uh, not having the fuel takes about five seconds so if I turn it off it's about five seconds so it's still faster to use the uh, kill switch which is what it does it take it breaks the circuit or opens the circuit of the magneto so if you don't know what's the magneto magneto is a high voltage generator that right here uh, so has a uh, a coil, high voltage coil, and a core, and once is because it's very close to a rotor part of the starter, and the rotor has two magnets. When you pull the when you pull the rope, the starter rope, the two magnets spin. And in the past they used one magnet, but now they use two magnets uh, close to each other, so you get two sparks. And that magnet, moving at higher speed, uh, induces uh, an electrical current, so a magnetic field, uh, converted by the coil into an electrical field. And because the coil has hundreds of thousands of uh, windings, you get a very high voltage, but at very low current. So that high voltage is able to a uh, jump from one side to another of the spark plug so it's going to penetrate the air and it's going to cause an arc which in turn is causing the explosion it's igniting the uh, the vapor made out of air and uh, fuel and so that's when you start but once the engine is running that that disc that has the two magnets is still spinning with a crankshaft and while spinning is going next to the uh, that magneto coil next to the uh, the core uh, which is magnetic material and then I guess uh, like it does with the starting process it keep maintaining the the spark so but the, there is a primary circuit of that magneto that's in series with uh, 
with a start uh, with a 